just when you thought it was safe to go back in the water, right? Here we are throwing you a curveball. If you pay a little bit of attention here in week three, uh, you'll see some things that I think uh, might make you stutter a bit or stammer, and I don't want you to, so I'm going to see if I can catch you off at the pass. Um, if you look, and what I'm talking about is all this going on right here, you'll see that this week you have a midterm assignment, you have these two assignments, and you have another assignment. Let me prepare you a bit. Midterm assignment just means I'm going to check up with you, and if you respond to me, you're going to have some extra points, okay? I'm going to do it pretty much like I did before. I'll either uh, send you, maybe I'll try to get you on the phone again if your phone works and my phone works, or if I have the right number, or I may go ahead and uh, send you a text message. That's something we can all do, right? My phone kind of goes out on me from time to time, and I, I want to apologize for that, and thank you all very much for bearing with me as I've tried to talk to you before. Um, the other thing we can certainly do is you're welcome to call me. Uh, having done that, I sometimes have a better idea uh, when I can get you on the line, uh, which lets me maybe try when maybe the lines aren't so busy, or I don't know. Anyway, that's another thing. Or you can send me an email and say, hey, I got your text, or hey, I talked to you, or something like that. Just, But you need to respond to however I reach out, all right? And that will, like I say, give you some free and easy points, which is a good thing. Now, that's this assignment. These two are normal discussions, like you're kind of used to doing now. And assignment three is basically a kind of a, an objective quiz. Now, saying that, I have to prepare you. There are two small essays at the, at the end of that quiz uh, that I want you to give some time to and thought. Now, when these tests are due, at the end of this grading period for week three, I will post grades. Once I've posted your grade, I can't alter it. But before I do, you can take that test as many times as you want, which means you can answer the questions and you can, on the objective especially, if you get something that is wrong, it'll tell you right off it's wrong, you could go find the right answer and go back in there and put it up. So take that part as much as you can or as much as you need to because you really should get a perfect score on at least those questions. Now on the essay, with just a little thought, I think you could do the same thing. So make sure all that's together. That, um, and you can, like I say, you can go back in and do this. So the only thing is once I put that grade up, I can't go back and change it. Now, uh, assignment one and assignment two are the straight kind of discussion. And it seems that this is an area that we get a little bit nervous about, um, or we have a little, it, in the past, at any rate, it's been a little bit hard for students to kind of pin down what the difference is between subject and content and style and what kind of style. So let me talk to you just a minute about that. Now, a lot of you got responses from me that have said things like, you need to be clear, you need to be specific, uh, you need to be sure you check out the PDF that I posted, of course, for Elements and Principles. Um, because I give you a lot more information there, I think, that is helpful in, in putting this together than you have in, in necessarily this uh, terminology of readings. But you may not need that. You may know all that, and that's fine. But if you do need the extra, take time to go to that PDF. Now, let's talk a little bit about subject and style, because if you'll notice, that's what week three is a lot about, okay? In fact, almost all about. Um, I think the easiest way to remember things here is that subject is more about the content of the work. And you're looking at the uh, Picasso painting here, Les Demoiselles, and D'Avignon, and this particular piece, um, to look at it, and if I ask you what the subject was, uh, you might be taken aback at first, but if you kind of look at the style and you kind of interpret what's there, you'll come up with your subject. These are women. These are one, two, three, four, five. I didn't say they were beautiful women. Didn't say that they looked realistic. Thank goodness, huh? But they're women. So you would say probably that the subject is about what's going on in this painting. You have five women. They're in various states of undress. One of them seems to have a mask on. Another one does too. These two do not. What does all this mean? Well, that's all about the subject. It's about these women, all right? And a lot of times you'll see a painting and you'll tell me about what's going on in it. I'm going to look at this Napoleon right down here, too, real quick. This is an easier one for some of you to describe, I suspect. If 
I ask you about the subject, you'd say, well, it's Napoleon on a horse and he's moving forward. Now, if you want to tell me it's dark and gloomy or stormy or, you know, there's all this battle going on, I don't see much here. Actually, there's very little other than him on the horse. But if you see all that and that's part of what your subject's about, it's Napoleon in the, in the middle of this battle, okay? So that's the subject. And you would proceed maybe to tell me about the subject. That all contributes to your content, all right? Now, content and subject, I would kind of put together a little bit, but content is kind of an umbrella, and it also includes style a little bit. Style is more about the building or the construction of that composition or that content, okay? Style is how is that built? Now, this is where you get into using your elements and your principles a lot. Uh, I'm not saying you can't use them when you are describing your subject, but the subject is more about what's actually going on. The, the style is more about how it's going on. How did the artist make, for an example, Napoleon your focal point in this piece? Well, remember in, in Elements and Principles that focal point can be achieved by uh, three ways. It can be achieved by placement. You see how this line and this line, these are actual lines, my friends, that lead you right to that horse, so they're pointing to the horse. Even that rock and the shape on the rock is kind of pointing to the horse in Napoleon. And as your eye comes this way, look, as your eye goes down the horse, it all comes back here. Now that's placement, my friends. Everything's pointing to Napoleon, all right? Now then, if you decided that it was focal point by, let's say, contrast, well, it's the only red in the painting, isn't it? It contrasts with every other hue. And if I were talking about the hue, I'd want to tell you it was a saturated red. And I'd want to tell you that the value is about medium. You know, it's not real light, it's not real dark, but it's, a, it's red, the hue, it's saturated, very intense, vibrant red, right? So by contrast of color, one thing, maybe, um, and then another one might very well be isolation. There's nothing else here but Napoleon on that horse, right? So David, who painted this piece, took no chances. You have three ways to choose or three ways to achieve focal point. He used all three of them. You can't go wrong on a thing like that. All right, that's talking about the style. Now, if I talked about the shape, that would also be talking about the style. These shapes are very natural. Okay, they're not organic, they're natural. That means they look like what things really are. This really looks like a horse. Go back up here to, whoop, to Picasso. These shapes are not natural. These are very distorted. And if you'll take the time to look at the definition of different shapes, distorted shapes are abstract, aren't they? So that would help you if you were talking about the style of the Picasso piece, all right? Um, now, the other thing that you're going to hit this week is talking a little bit about conventions, all right? Um, and when you get into style, you'll find that there are different movements that are kind of hit by the time and the culture that they come from. And that's kind of where conventions is about. Let's see if there's anything I can tell you there real quick. Ah, yeah, you see? This is an English, or an English, an Egyptian sculpture right here. A lot of the conventions of the time told you how these sculptures had to be done. In other words, there's not any great um, classical composition, let's say. Classical usually refers to that very realistic kind of natural image that you find with the ancient Greeks, all right, or the classical Greeks to be specific. Uh, this is not that same kind of proportion, uh, but in fact it was dealt or rather uh, called upon by the convention of the time when Rahotep uh, was being sculpted for this probably funeral piece, I'm not sure, um, then there was a certain specific way that it had to be done. His hands had to be in a particular position. Uh, these writings on the back that tell you wonderful things about who he was and what he did, all right? That's very important, and the conventions dictated that, and a lot of times that gives you the style. It's that culture, but it's also the way, in essence, that certain um, content is, is treated, all right? Um, so, 
I don't want to confuse you and I feel like I am. So take a few minutes, go through these, uh, look at what is read, try not to be too confused. And when you start your writing, don't feel bad about having to go back on this and, and look it over and be sure that you're getting it right. I mean, that's how we learn these things. Don't think for a minute that you can just do this off the cuff, that it's one of those things you can, oh, I can talk about anything, you know, so I'm just going to talk about this and talk about how this is working. It doesn't work in this course. you got to have a little something behind it. you got to back it up, okay? Anyway, this is my attempt to help make week three a little less scary for you. I hope I didn't do the opposite. Uh, at any rate, have a nice evening or afternoon or morning or whenever you're viewing this, and uh, I look forward to working with you more online.